Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, very glad you're holding this hearing. I think, as you and I have talked about, the question of taxation on the business side is absolutely crucial to doing tax reform right. So I'm looking forward to working with you and, uh, and Senator Hatch. Here's my sense of, of where we are for the four of you, and I'm gonna ask one question to just go down, down the road. There was a recent study by the accounting firm Ernst & Young, and they found that a few years ago, pass-throughs, which of course are you know, companies, you know, where you have owners, investors, you know, partners, are paying taxes as individuals. Pass-throughs make up 95% of American businesses and employed 54% of US workers. And essentially, in this analysis, Ernst & Young found that reforming the code for corporations alone, for just corporations, and as you know, there are some in Washington, of course, that are ad advocating that, would in effect raise income taxes for millions of these small businesses, sole proprietorships, partnerships, and, uh, and the like. So the question that I'd like to ask, and, and I'm asking it because I think if you look back at 86, the resolution of this business issue was absolutely key to job creation. And the Bureau of Labor Statistics in the two years after the 86 bill said the country created 6.3 million new jobs. Now nobody can claim that every one of those jobs is due to tax reform, but getting the climate set right as it relates to job creation is key and particularly creating jobs in the country. So my question for all of you is given that Ernst and Young study and the prevalence of these pass-through entities, doesn't tax reform have to be comprehensive, individual and business? in order to provide real tax relief to the overwhelming majority of Americans. Let's just go right down you know, the row and, and we can start with, uh, with you, Mr. DeHassan. Well, thank you, Senator. Uh, very briefly, because I can only comment from an European point of view and give you my, uh, you know, initial views on that, I think that indeed it must be comprehensive. You cannot leave alone uh, a part of the business, uh, the way business is carried on, uh, um, restructure the other side of it. There will be uh, an effect from one side to another that uh, I would expect is inevitable. You have to Coming from a European background, and my experience there, it has to be comprehensive, yes. Very, very good. Mr. Warren. Um, I agree that uh, tax reform would have to be comprehensive in part because the effects of our current system depend on the interaction of those four rates that I talked about before. But I would go even further than you did to say that it, the tax reform, business tax reform, since we're talking about tax reform of entities and investors, also implicates other kinds of investors like tax exempt investors, um, charitable endowments and pension plans. Imagine a proposal that would say, let's dramatically reduce the corporate tax rate um, and make it up by increasing um, the top individual rate on dividends. Um, uh, that would have a certain distribution, as you suggested, between individuals and the companies. It would also have very strong positive effects um, uh, for investors that happen to be exempt um, because they would benefit from the reduction at the corporate level but would not bear um, uh, any of the burden. So I'd say they even have to be brought into the mix. And that's also true of foreign investors. Sure. So, that, so, that, so that I think absolutely you have to think about all of these possible combinations. Thanks. That's true. Uh, that's what you've just said was obviously one of the core points I discuss in my in my testimony, and the way I think of it a little bit is by use of uh, of the, bras, uh, the the base broadening revenue, and I would not be comfortable for reasons I go into in my testimony, in a, with a world that we use the base broadening, you you socked it to me so to speak, 
and you lowered and, and reformed and, and made more rational the, the corporate level rates applicable to publicly corp, uh, public uh, corporations. But on the other hand, you reintroduced a significant disparity between that, that pass-through world, uh, the, the individual world. And uh, it may very well be that we, at the end, have to live with some disparity, but I think we have to look at the process jointly or we haven't accomplished much in neutrality. Mr. Lefrak, last word from my round. Uh, the, uh, everybody would agree that comprehensive tax reform at the corporate and individual level is important. However, I would want to caution you about 1986 in one respect. Uh, in 1986, tax reform did uh, wreck the real estate industry in the United States, which was one of the major reasons why we had an SNL crisis. And given that we're in a position of financial and job fragility in the United States right now, uh, where our financial sector and our job sector are both hurting, um, I think that all types of tax reforms have to be very, very considered and measured, uh, and 1986 style uh, reforms might in some way be playing with matches uh, uh, in, this, in this environment. My, my time has expired. I, I don't only say, I think, yes, this is a very different time in terms of real estate and housing than you had in, in the 80s. And as you know, Senator Packwood was one of the key architects of, of tax reform from my, my home, home state. I just think one of the big challenges is, as you look at this question, business, if you don't bring in all sides, and as you know, there are a lot of groups here in Washington right now that are advocating corporate only, and a number of you, you know, expressed it. I think you're not going to get relief to the overwhelming majority of Americans, and that was the linchpin in 86, is the overwhelming majority of Americans all the people who work hard and play by the rules got real tax relief, and I just want to make sure we get that done. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.